Chemistry Widows podcast, where we heal in public, so those healing in private can keep going. Today, we have my girl, Sydney. Y'all, I met Sydney last month. She came to the Street Widows uh, podcast premiere watch party when it was ugly weather outside. <laughs> it was the middle of the week. Everybody wanted to stay home. But God brought Sydney out. Literally. And she told me my story. <laughs> she said, my name is Sydney. I'm a 29-year-old widow. It's we get to talk. I got a son. I got a daughter. <laughs> like, literally. I said, girl, stop. Stop. <laughs> you telling me me. <laughs> um, and so I just instantly, like, connected with her because of that. Um, so we have met, but we don't know each other very well. Um, and so we're going to get to know each other a little better today on Street Widows Podcast. Um so before we were talking about like having anger towards a spouse mm -hmm. and you said i just wonder which widow i'm gonna be today which one? my <laughs> head might spin around and it's gonna be scary in here <laughs> am i the loving and um i don't want to put words in your mouth but maybe you said loving and grieving widow mm -hmm. or Am I the one who wants you to come back from the dead so that I can <laughs> kill you again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that is such a, um, I identify with that in a different way, but I think that's such a perspective that I don't hear people often talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and people will say like, you know, I'm so angry at you for leaving me, mm -hmm. but your story is different. Mm -hmm. Let's start with why you feel that way. Um. If there was ever a time to, there's never a time to do what he's done, but if there was ever a time, it wasn't now. It wasn't right now when everything is finally going our way. Like, we were on a family trip, on our way, we had started a business. We were literally on our way, like, we got approved over the road. I got the ne the message that we got approved for, like, a startup loan, so a uh, jumpstart for credit, so we could leverage our credit and use it for the business. It, it this this time 2023 like if there was ever a time for him to be so damn bad where he's on drugs whatever the case it wasn't this year it mm -hmm. was not and it's like you have a wife you have children you're blessed you're healthy like i'm not the only one who's lost all this weight he has too because i've been making sure that we're healthy like we're changing our lives so this was just i don't understand how somebody would be willing to break a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old's heart. Regard, like, even put me aside, these two beautiful children that you're the world to. You know what I mean? So I can't, I, I can't understand that. And so that's what pisses me off. And that's what makes me feel like, like I said, I don't know which one I'm going to be today. Because it's like, okay, oh, that's my husband. Blah, blah. But then I immediately stop myself and I say, oh, no. Because I'm like, I'm not going to even sit around it's like he just erased everything. Mm -hmm. We've been together since we were 16. I grew up with him. Like, we grew up together. We have children. We're married. You know, every memory that I have is attached to him because we shared it together, bringing our kids here, everything. And so I'm like, he just, like, erased it all from doing this. And I feel like, it just pisses me off. Like, like I said, I just, I get enraged and I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't really know how to really put it all into words. I just, I get so mad. And then everything that happened after too. And it's like, why would you ever, I, I can't understand how you could be so down bad to where you want to do drugs and then almost die from it. I saved your life. <laughs> And then you do it again. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, the first time. Okay, you got that. You see you see what can happen to you? Now you see. Okay, cool. And you see how the people who you was doing it with reacted? They was leaving you for dead? Mm -hmm. I'm calling around trying to figure out what happened to you. What did you take? He's not waking up. Oh, no, no, no. These are the people you're going off and doing this with. Mm -hmm. The second time, why would you do it again? You know what I mean? Like, you was willing to risk 
it all and you lost and so that's what makes me like wow like you really put us on the table like okay like let me see if i win and you lost and you was willing to risk it you was willing to risk the increase in bakari so that's what makes me be like okay if like if i could ever speak to him again i wouldn't mm-hmm. i wouldn't say nothing like if he's standing right here right now i wouldn't even look at him because to me, you put us down here. So, like, you're willing to never see us again and us go without you forever. We built a family. So, I'm like, okay, I'm going to treat you like that then. Like, mm-hmm. I don't ever want to, I would never. Like, the guy was like, you can talk to, you can have your husband back for that. No, thank you. And that's not fair. Like, that's how cold it is. Because I feel like that's how cold he treated us by overdosing. Mm-hmm. And so let's take a step back now i almost did this then but um thank you for sharing that thank you in such like an honest and raw way Mm -hmm. um because that's a big emotion to have that (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's a big emotion to have um and just thank you for sharing that thank you for allowing the space yeah so Let's go back now um, to the day you lost him. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about, just walk me through your day. Like from the time you woke up, what was that day like for you? So we was on the road driving. Um, I had drove for a little bit. And so I mean, he's like super sleepy and all of that. So I'm like, I'll drive. But I'm like, I had an uneasy feeling. I kept like when he was driving, I kept feeling like, why are you so tired? I'm not knowing. I'm like, why are you so tired? You know, I was like, I'll go ahead and drive. Cause I had said, I ain't driving. So I didn't want to go on this trip at all. Cause I had literally just got back from Paris like uh, two days before. And he's like, go to, uh, you know, Phoenix, Arizona. I'm like, okay. I didn't want to go. Something told me to go. I was like, let's go. We're going to play, go to some casinos. You know, I'm thinking, like, we're going to win a bunch of money. I was like, I know. We about to win. A ho- I just knew we was about to have some kind of life-changing event. Literally knew. Mm-hmm. And I thought we was going to win, like, $50,000. I just kept seeing $50,000. i am like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go. I was like, I don't even want to go. I was like, I'm just going to go. We can go to some casinos. Casinos. Um, so, anyway, I had told him, like, I'm not driving, though. But in that moment, like, that day, um, well, really, he passed at, like, 4 something in the morning. So, like I I wasn't driving. Um, I had drove us through like the top of Texas and then through um I think Oklahoma or something. And yeah, yeah, through the top of Texas and was it New Mexico? One of those states. And we got to Oklahoma, we pulled over at a, a Walmart and it was his turn to drive. We stopped at Walmart and got some little stuff. And um, you know, we was playing with the kids, taking little pictures and stuff, and then um we got in and he was gonna go ahead and drive. So I was asleep, but I couldn't really sleep good. Like I kept feeling so uneasy, like my stomach, you know how you just know something bad about having your stomach was like hot. It was just hot and it was just like, I could not sleep. I could not stay asleep. And I kept waking up, checking on him. Like, you good, you good, you good. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. And I'm like, you ain't sleepy, you don't need to pull over. Like if you sleepy, let's just pull over, you know? And he's like, I'm good. And so then um, he nudged me because on the way there, I had woke up in, we was in Tulsa and it was like right there where Hard Rock Cafe and all it is. It was just like dark outside. So it was just lit up. And I was like, okay, this is where we're going to win 50000 It's sick. I was like, this is where we're going to win $50,000. I was like, on the way back, let's go here and let's play. Let's, you know, gamble. So on the way back, he woke me up. He's like, you still want to go over here? I'm like, yeah. And I was like, but you just go in. I'm going to just wait with the kids. And um, so we pull over, he goes in and he went he like he comes out he's like you know trying to flash like he won a couple of hundred dollars i'm like oh okay i'm like why you stop i was like you won because i'm expecting fifty thousand dollars i'm like well you was winning why you stop you know you finna hit the jackpot he's like you think i should go back in i was like yeah go back in like you know win a little more and um and he had just won at like a gas station casino too so i'm like yeah we on a winning streak like the third time you win it's gonna be that 50. the big win it's gonna be that 50. so i'm like go back in so we had pulled out and we pulled back into a little spot. He went in again. He came out a little bit later and he was like, uh, he's like, I got a little greedy. He's like, I should have stopped. I was up a couple hundred more and he's like, I should have stopped right there, but I, I got greedy. So he lost a little bit of it, like what the little bitty portion he took back in. I'm like, okay, well, let's go. You know, I'm like, okay, I guess not. You know, I guess it ain't going to happen here. And then we was pulling out again and then he's like, nah, he's like, I'm going to go back in one more time. 
<laughs> I was like, I was like, you sure? I was like, you know, he's like, yeah, I want to go back in one more time. I'm like, okay, well, we must go and win the fifth. And so we parked again, like literally since the third time. So he went in there and I'm just waiting, waiting. It was a little long. I'm just waiting, waiting. I'm like, okay. <sighs> and then I see the security come out, coming like walking fast towards the car. I'm like, oh my God. Cause they had already came and knocked saying we couldn't. Cause I had fell asleep while I was waiting for him the first time. Mm -hmm. So they had came and knocked and said like, oh, you can't sleep in the parking lot. You have to be awake or you have to move. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, so I just was staying up. So I thought they was coming thinking we were sleeping in. And uh, he rushed over. He's like, oh, are you waiting for somebody? I was like, yeah, my husband. He's like, uh, big guy, something, something, something. I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, does he have, uh, you know, any problems with seizures or anything like that? And I'm like, no. And he was like, well, he's, he's collapsed on the floor. They, they think he's having a seizure you know, uh, something. And so I'm like, I'm half sleep, but I'm just like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I'm thinking, oh God, he won $50,000 and somebody hit his ass over the head and took his ticket. I'm not letting go of, cause I knew something big was gonna happen. So I'm not letting go of, oh, we about to win a bunch of money. And uh, like literally I was just sleep. We get to the casino, dad had me, yeah, he came to the car. And I'm just like, okay. So I'm thinking he's just passed out. So I'm like, well, let me go. He's like, you want to come meet us? They, we call the ambulance. You want to come meet us at the back? I'm like, okay. So I go, I'm, as I'm going around to get in the driver's side, <clears throat> he's like, yeah, they're doing CPR on him right now. And I look back. I'm like, hold on, wait. Like you said, so you, you mean he's dead? Like you saying they're doing CPR. You didn't say, oh, they're doing CPR on your husband. Is anything? Da, da, da. And he just was like, oh, does he have a problem with seizures? Just asking me something. And so when he said, uh, we're doing, they're doing CPR on them right now. I immediately, like, my stomach sank. And I'm like, wait, what? And so I, I'm like, okay. So I get in the car and I go around. And I had a couple of missed calls from, like, two minutes ago. I'm like, oh, thank God he don't woke up. So I'm thinking he don't woke up because, like, he was talking, he was calling me while the man was out there. That's what I was thinking. And I get around there and I'm like, um, oh, he's calling me. I was like, he just called me two minutes ago. Is, is he up? And he was like, no, we was calling you. <sighs> and I was like, we're going to hurry up. You ain't going to be able to follow us because we're going to be going real fast. They still, they're trying to do CPR on him. Like, I'm like, how long can y'all do CPR on a person, you know? And um, so, yeah, they was like, this is where we're going. This is the address, but you're not going to be able to follow us. We're going to be going way too fast. I was driving, and I was just like, okay, Sydney, just like my stomach was just going crazy. I just feel everything very strong in my gut, and my intuition just, mm -hmm. it churns. And uh, so I'm just driving. I'm like, okay, I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm like, what could have happened to this man? I'm like, somebody done, kill, done hit him, not killed him. I'm not thinking dead, even after he said CPR. Because just in July, I seen him laying half dead on the floor, barely breathing, and they woke him up and got, they narcaned him, and he stood up. So I'm like, okay. You know what I'm saying? So when they said CPR, I'm like, okay, CPR, I mean, he did. But I'm like, but he was dead before. You know, so okay. Get to the hospital and something was just like it was just something real slow about it Like me getting there driving there me getting to the hospital They was like, oh, we don't have him in the system yet and just trying to get to that point to where I'm seeing him It was just all of it was very slow mm -hmm. And I'm just like knowing I'm just knowing something's going on. I just know I just know and so I'm trying to like keep my calm But I just know I just know I'm like, it's gonna feel like the last time it does not feel like the last time. And so we finally get to go back. And it was like, the kids can't go in there. I'm like, why the hell can't the kids go in there? You know, so I had to leave them with the home stranger nurse. I don't know, but she was nice. I uh, go in there. And uh, he's laying in the bed, got the tubes. And they already got the tubes in them. And then when I seen the tubes in him and he's laying there completely still, immediately I'm like, okay, something going on. Because the last time they had to tube him two times. They had to hold him. Mm -hmm. Everybody, all the people, the nurses had to hold him down. Like he was waking up because he was yanking it out. He was laying there still just breathing like the machine was breathing and they was like neuro, the neurology people whatever came in lifted his eyelids up and i seen his eye his pupils i said oh no i, I like got sick to my stomach i said i can't look at him like that like i knew like his eye it looked like sharks like you mm -hmm. know how a shark's eyes are just black no nothing it was like that i'm like oh my god mm -hmm. so they was like well, we want to talk to you over in the room immediately as soon as i get there like we want to talk to you over here in this room I'm like, okay, they finna tell me that man did. Like, I'm like, wow, like what? And I still don't know. I'm not thinking drugs. Like, I swear to God, I'm not thinking drugs at all. I just found out in July he was even doing drugs. And he played it to me like, oh, it's not even drugs, it's not even that, it's not even da da da. It was just. So he was like, yeah, we don't know. You know, because they said that he had a, his nose was broke, first of all. When I came to see him, his nose was completely broke and he had a, he had burns right here. They said that he was standing, he stood up from the machine. And he grabbed his head and fell straight to the floor on his face. And he's six foot, mm -hmm. 300 pounds. So, you know, there was a lot of force behind it. But 
yeah, like this is all like this is like at five something in the morning at this point. And um Yeah, I'm still not thinking I still don't know. I'm like, y'all don't know what could have happened or like what was on the video. I wanna see the video, you know. And um I'm still just waiting since I, I have an, I'm clueless. I'm literally clueless and I'm not thinking drugs in the slightest because ever since July to so then before I went to Paris, clean, completely clean, completely like just different it was like honestly the best time in our relationship like in a long time because that experience happened and it scared the hell out of him and that's why i was like thinking he was scared straight mm -hmm. <laughs> but i went to paris and one thing about my husband he he needs something you know what i'm saying and i've always been to something you know what i'm saying he always smokes drinks stuff like that but i've always we've been each other something like we cry laugh everything it's me and him since we was literally 16 years old so I, I guess this is stress. I don't know. But for him, like, when I left and taking care of the kids and sending me money and doing this and that, I don't know. And then, you know, being by himself. But, um, yeah, that day, like I said, that day, yeah, they took me immediately in the room when I got there. Um, <coughs> that he had a brain injury that they've never seen anybody come back from. Like, they was just saying all of this stuff. I'm like, are you trying to tell me he's not going to wake up? You know? And they was like, pretty much, yeah, he's not, we've never seen anybody recover. They were saying that the, um, whatever, the piece in the back of his brain, like, it didn't get oxygen for too long. And um, he's brain dead. So I'm like, well, what else can we do? You know, I'm like, okay, like, there's something else y'all gonna say. Mm -hmm. Like, do we just take him and bury him right now? Like, what What else is, something can be done. You know what I mean? I'm like, y'all don't know him. <laughs> I literally was cracking up. I'm like, y'all do not know this man. Like, y'all don't know him. He ain't dead. <laughs> like yeah, he plays too much. He's not dead. He, y'all, he's not dead. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's just that bewilderment. Like Dante, he ain't dead. I'm like he woke up last night. Like he can wake up again. He can get up again. He can, you know. They did the test on him, and um, before they even did the test, I actually was digging through his pot. Like I was looking. This is hours later. It's like twelve o'clock now. Mm -hmm. I'm still confused. I still don't know why. I still don't know what happened to him. I'm looking through his belongings they gave me. His pants is all cut up. I'm digging down in his pockets trying to see. I'm like, that damn casino tickets in his pocket. If they in his pocket, they stole it. Somebody hit him over the head. I'm still just making up shit. <laughs> oh, can I cuss? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making up. I, I can't for the life of me figure what the hell happened to this man. So I'm digging through his pockets. We sitting out in the lobby because I hadn't took the kids in yet. Because I didn't know if I should let them see him yet. Like, until I know for real if they need to say goodbye to him. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm digging through his pockets. I dig all the way down in the corner. And I find a little tissue piece of paper. It's actually the wrapping off of a roll of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the little thin wrapping that comes, like, on just a single roll. It yeah. was that. It had a little blue work on it. It was that. And it had little pills in it. I said, <gasps> mm. immediately. Like, once I realized what it was, I'm like, okay. I went to the room. They showed me the test. I was like, okay, we need to go see the shoes out. Because now I know what happened. I know how it happened. I know, like, why it happened. And I gotta go. Like, immediately it switched from me being totally bewildered and confused to, like, okay, I need to get the hell home. Like, I'm nine mm hours -hmm. away from home. I need to get my kids home. I need to... I just want to get the, get the hell out of there. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, okay, we need to go. And I already told him before. I said, you ever do that shit again? I say, I swear to God, I'll go to bed. I just go to bed. I would not sit here. I would slap him in July. Slap him trying to wake up. I said, do that again. I said, that's what you chose for yourself. And I can't, I'm not, it's not my place to interfere with what you chose for you. You know what I mean? This time I didn't know what was wrong with you until after you woke up. I was like, do it again. But God didn't even let me have to deal with it at all. He, mm -hmm. he was in the casino, completely away from me. I had no say in it whatsoever and didn't even put no thing into my mind to say, Oh, Narcan them. Like, I didn't even think to Narcan them because I'm not thinking drugs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just got all off of the day. <laughs> no, I mean, but you're telling your story. Yeah. Um. I, I immediately, I told him, I was like, we had talked about it anyway. Like, I was like, if something ever happened to me and, like, I'm a vegetable or something, don't keep me on the machine. Don't do that. Like, immediately let my body go, you know, put me in the earth, bear, and let me return to the dirt, you know. And uh, and same thing for him, you know. So immediately, once they was like, they showed me the scans. There was no activity. There was no nothing. Oxygen get to his brain. It was nothing. I'm just like, and say so sad. But um, 
I have a question. Yeah. So going back to the first time when you had to save him from the overdose, mm-hmm. what was that experience like for you? Like how in the moment, what were you thinking? And then afterwards, how were you feeling? And to just give kind of context of what, I, what I'm thinking when I ask that question is, um, like if to have that experience with somebody and to feel like like you're choosing that over me or our family or our children like I wonder how that first experience was for you which you like sharing that you didn't even know this was a thing the first time was not I won't say it was more traumatizing. It was just like the introduction into it. So it was like, it was, it was very, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I was definitely traumatized. Like for weeks after I still just couldn't believe it. Cause I just thought I was going to bed and I go in there and he's just breathing weird and like snoring weird. And so I'm like, wake up, wake up, like wake up. He won't wake up. So I'm slapping him, wake up, spraying him. Like what, why won't you wake up? And then I'm like, what the hell? And that's when I called the ambulance system. They was like, you need to get him to the floor. And it just got real quick. It got it got real very quick. And I'm just like, what the heck? And then they came and they asked me, like, is he taking something? Is he on something? I'm like, no, I don't know. I don't know what the hell is going on. And they like, and it looks like he on some drugs or something. And something. And then they was like, get the Narcan. Narcan them got up, threw up. And immediately, like, I went in the living room because I thought he was going to die. I went in the living room. And I'm like, Sydney, don't go back in there. Just, just, they going to they gonna get him up. But I'm like, oh my God, like, is he even, I thought he was going to die. And then I heard him, you know, I heard him throw up. So I was immediately like, oh, thank you, God. And then I was like, you mother. <laughs> it was immediate. Like, how do you feel these extreme emotions at the same time? I was so relieved. It was a relief that came over me when I heard him throwing up. And then immediately I was pissed. Because I'm like, did you really just put me, what? And thank God my kids did not wake up. They was right in their room. They did not wake up. All the people that was in the house, they did not they did not wake up. I was so thankful because I wouldn't want to, to see that. It mm-hmm. just it was just I just didn't know what the hell was going on. I never seen nothing like that in my life. So I'm sitting here trying to wake him up. I'm yanking him, trying to yank his mouth open because it was like his mouth wasn't open. It was like it was locked and his tongue was glued. It was I was traumatized as hell. And then to get to the hospital, they're like, oh, he has pneumonia real bad. They still don't even know that it's drugs. And it was like, he got he has mm-hmm. pneumonia real bad and something, something, something. And they was like, we got to put him to sleep, put him on the ventilator, put him to sleep to try to clean the pneumonia out of his lungs. So then he had to immediately be put to sleep. So it's like, I went through that. And then for four, five days after that, I'm still, mm-hmm. it's like, I told him, and I told him this after he got out of the hospital. I'm like, it felt like I was in like a big white room all by myself and like nothing. It was just quiet. You know what I'm saying? This is the person I chat to all day long. So I'm just like, any big event, it's me and you. But like, you're the big event, so it's just me. You know, like going through something and you're the big event I'm going through. You know, these actions you take. And so it was just that first experience. Like, it happened so quick. I was just going to bed. So I was falling asleep on the couch. I'm just like, I just need to go to bed. And my daughter kept on trying to, she's like, my daughter, she usually just go to bed. She's like, mommy, go to bed. Telling me, kept telling me to go to bed. I'm like, why you keep telling me to go to bed? You go to bed. So I finally was like, I need to go to bed. <laughs> I'm like, God tried to save you. <laughs> he mm-hmm. saved you that first time. He said, see me go in there and go to bed. Mm-hmm. To save you. And so the second time, he said, okay, we'll go in there and do it. So they don't even got to see. Because, like, you're playing, you know. But the first experience was extremely traumatizing. And it, it kicked me into a certain mental state to where when he died, it was like it just wasn't that that canon event that mm-hmm. the first one was. It, it it pushed me into the mind state of like, oh my God, that could happen to me, or that could happen to my husband. He could do something like that. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I'm not thinking he could do something like that. So when he actually died, I'm like, oh my God, you really could do something like that. You know, I, I'm I'm. Anybody you even talk to, like, in our family, anything, you would never, they would never say, oh, yeah, I could see Dante doing that. Never. So, it was... What do you feel, 
<clears throat> what do you feel pushed him to that? Or like, <laughs> you know, if you had, because we can never be inside of anybody's mind, right? Yeah. But if you had to say, like, what do you feel like was that thing for him that, you know, like made him so feel so low? Or maybe he felt high. Maybe, you know, sometimes it's the people you're around and you it gives you a high feeling. Yeah. I had literally said a little bit of something about this to your cousin earlier about um, just this year for me. Like, yeah. this 2023, this is the first time in our relationship and in our lives when I'm not micromanaging him. Mm -hmm. I, so I had a health scare, like, in 2022 in October. And I said, okay, I gotta get myself together. I gotta, I gotta focus on myself. I was like, why am I just always, I'm, I pour into people. You know what I'm saying? I love the people I'm with. I love, I love the people that I'm around. I love my family. I love my sisters. My everybody. I love, and of course, I love my husband and I love my children. And I'm like, I need to take better care of myself. And I can't. I'm like always trying to encourage him, like, oh, go do this, get your CDL, do the, you know. And he, and he is the more I push, he eventually will do it. You know what I mean? But it's like I have to put so much into getting him into any kind of. Because I'm picturing him. Okay, he's the man. He's the husband. He's gonna lead us. He's so I'm pushing him, and I'm like, well, it seems like I'm leading because I'm mm -hmm. the one pushing you to do all the stuff that is helping us. So it's like I'm like Sydney. Give yourself that motivation. Give yourself those pep talks get go hard on yourself and don't be relentless with yourself and what you expect from yourself go work out do all the stuff you want to do like everything like i'm learning french i'm working now i'm cooking three damn times a day organic from scratch like making sure we're all healthy literally literally girl, i'm <laughs> i'm putting all of that energy into myself i'm like sydney what else can you do like what else can i learn what else can i do to help myself especially as far as my health goes because i started keto and like just really focusing on that understanding food and how how food affects your body and, and what it does inside your body because i was like there's no way i could ever let myself just get sick and die or get sick and be laid up somewhere unable to take care of myself and my children absolutely not hell no so i said okay you gotta give it up you gotta give up this thing so that you can have what you want and a part of that was me not focusing on him not telling him like he wouldn't even have got as far as he did in his addiction if i was the same 2022 city because i'm looking at his phone i'm doing this i'm doing that I'm like why would you why are you talking to this person and don't go over there don't do this i was doing none of that i was focused on him i was getting up going to the gym he's like dang can you stay with me just stay in here and oh you working out again and oh how long you gonna be gone and are you really going to the gym and i'm like okay and he'll go do whatever he's doing he's like oh, i'm going to do this i'm like okay like, I'm not, oh, where are you going? And why are you doing that? And why are you smoking again? And why are you? You a grown man. I'm a grown woman. And I need to pour into me. And that's the way that I've been able to get to this point. <clears throat> and I'm like, so you finally get some freedom to, like, prove yourself that you can make good decisions and <laughs> even not even make a good decision, make a normal decision to not do drugs like say no you know i was not and i'm not gonna just give myself all the credit like oh well no you know what i am i am yeah. i'm i am i am gonna give myself all the credit not saying that it's my fault at all but not saying it give myself the credit in the way of saying like oh it's my fault or oh i could have did something or anything like that i'm saying give myself the credit as far as he chose, I chose myself. I chose to stop micromanaging him. I chose to stop being obsessed with him, basically. And be obsessed with myself. Focus on myself. Tell myself to do the right thing. Don't eat that. Like, that's my, that was my thing. Sweets, Little Debbie's, food, just food, sweets. Like, I got to 320 pounds. So I'm like, there's no way I can live like this. I'm very unhappy. And I just took all of it away from every, not just him, everybody. Because I wouldn't, you can ask my family, I wouldn't even talk to nobody. Me, Carissa, but God, I'll micromanage them, tell them what to do to guide them. I'll micromanage myself, guide myself, force mm -hmm. myself, push myself. And he could just do whatever he wanted to do. Like, you going to go to work? You going to da, da, da. I'm still cooking. I'm still doing everything, doing all my wifely duties, but I'm just not being his mother. Like, I'm, I'm mothering my own self. I'm teaching myself. I'm forcing myself to grow. And... He took his freedom and he did what he wanted to do with it. And that's what he chose. 
So it was a thing where I had to choose me. Because I knew that's the reason I've been so on him about stuff. Because I know if he just go, if you just let him go, he'll just do anything and just end up anywhere, you know. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, let me just help him. What? <laughs> I'm like, what about me? What about me? Like, what the hell about me? Like, no. So I chose myself 20, since 2022 and on to now. I mm -hmm. chose myself. I've been focused on myself. And I, he, he got led astray, I guess. Do you ever feel guilty for Hell choosing no. yourself? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Imagine me crashing out. And he's how he is. And he's laid up doing drugs because he can't. He already. Absolutely not. If it was something to do with me and my health and I died from a disease or something, from being sick, and he was here with two kids, and he's and he's he has the mental fortitude that he has, which is. You see where he's at. So that's the mental fortitude he has. With my babies being subjected to a life of watching their daddy on drugs or high drug and this and that because he can't deal with being a single parent. I'm like, you you widowed me at 29. I had to drive home by my, everything and I ain't did a drug yet. So I would never feel bad for choosing myself because what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, no. He chose what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose me. And, and it's really taught me a lot about choosing choosing myself. Like, I really want to talk to women. Like, let these men crash out. Like, we can't uh, we can't sacrifice our health, our bodies, everything, trying to help these men. These men need to be mothered. You know? No. No. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Speaking of the men needing to be mothered, when I met you, <laughs> <laughs> when I met you, you was telling me that there was not a positive or loving relationship between you and your husband's family. Mm -hmm. um, and you told me, I, I wish that I could say like the craziest thing that I've heard, but unfortunately I've heard not even crazier, but just crazy shit that mm -hmm. neither you nor these people should have to deal with yeah but and i mean even misha for example because she's been on podcast and shared her story of the mama taking her to court for her husband's body insane 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 um so tell me um, you've told me but and not like super in-depth but sh if you wouldn't mind to share what that relationship looks like now, not even just you and the family, mm -hmm. but your children and their family, mm -hmm. um, and why it is where it is. Oh, there's no relationship. I'll never speak to them again in my life, ever. Um, and that, and the crazy part about it. Okay, so like I, like I, you know, I said I told. Well, you said that I told you I did um, about being attacked at my husband's wake. A wake I had only for them. Like, I was like, oh, you know, I was going to have them cremated in Tulsa. And he was like, we need to have, you know, say our goodbyes and get closure. I'm like, okay. So, flew him home and everything for his side, his Marshtown family and all of them to be able to see him say goodbye. Um, the relationship is, like I said, not existent. I'll never speak to them again, ever. And my children will never speak to them again. And... Yeah. If your kids were to come to you and want to speak to them, would you not allow them to? What, as children? Or as adults? Yeah, let's say like, let's say 12, 13, you know, like they want to know their daddy side of the family. Never, they know. Like, mm -hmm. That's all they need to know. That's all they, they know. They've been around them. They tell me stuff. I'm the one trying to, Dante, you know, take them to Marshtown with you and then, they like, oh, come back <laughs> with all kind of grants. And I'm just like, well, you know, now I know that, one, what would be the benefit of raising someone up like Dante who has been exposed to drug use and self-loathing self his whole life, you know? So it's like, what would be the benefit of them knowing them just to say they knew them because they blood related? It's not worth it. And um, after... They did what they did. 
oh, absolutely not. Like, I, I wouldn't even ever consider my children safe around them. Mm-hmm. And and that's big for me to have ever let them go around them in the first place because I do not let my children go. I don't even, I don't let people watch my kids. And um, and that's just based off my experiences as a child. And um, I'm very overprotective in that way. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah, and now, never. And they would never want to see them again. They, they, I'm very honest with my kids and transparent with them. They know everything. So, um, and then we didn't even come home after the I got attacked because I started getting threatened and all this craziness so we wasn't even living at our house for two months after my husband's wake so like they know that it's because I was attacked and you know they know they feel like there's some kind of war going on you know a child's mind like they see it as like there's a war going on and you know it's us and them and that you know we waiting for them to go to jail and all this other kind of crazy stuff so I mean they would never want to speak to them again Uh, they do have a, a little cousin that I really wish they could talk to because she loves them. They love her. You know, she was with us like at the funeral. She was with us the whole time, like over there in my car, everything. His family didn't come. They con- condolences, like a couple of people did. But like her mom and all of them, nothing. Did that, did that hurt you? That was strange. But at that time, like at the funeral stuff, I was just focused on sending him off well. Mm-hmm. You know, I suppressed all of my personal feelings. I'm like, I just want to send him off well. I want him to feel honored. I want him to feel like everybody who loved him was here and, and sent condolences and miss him and love him, you know? And then I'll get through everything else after that. But then, you know, the funeral did go great. Everybody came, you know, they they was acting a little weird. I don't know. I just came in right when it was time to start and left when it was time to go. But um, the wake yeah it 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 hurt me of course because at the end of the day i i don't like y'all i don't fool with y'all but i've always shown y'all love and i've always been respectful and so it kind of hurt actually but then again in july that was the situation where um like he when he would wake up off the anesthesia and trying to pull his tubes and stuff out and he was like writing stuff let me take me home take me home and i'm like no you have to stay here until x y and z and we're here because of you so stop complaining and just go to sleep and stop trying to pull the tubes out and he would write on paper like don't tell nobody in nelson county and he didn't want me to tell nobody so i'm like okay but then some kind of way the person who i called the cousin i called the night he that um the ambulance came he ended up because he didn't hear nothing else from me after that so he ended up calling trying to see what was going on and they ended up finding out where he was calling the hospital and stuff so they ended up coming up there i immediately wanted to go kick everybody out I'm like, no. I said, you know what, Cena, because I already been up there two days. And I got my kids. They staying at my sister's at night so I could st- sleep with him. And I'm just not sleeping. I'm just sitting there with a chair staring at him. Like, I can't even sleep. I'm just watching him, making sure he ain't about to stop breathing or some crazy shit. I'm like, we in the hospital. Go, go to sleep. But I just said, I was traumatized. But, <clears throat> yeah, when they got up there, I went ahead and went up there. I wrote him a note, gave it to the nurse. They don't even know that. And I didn't even know I was writing insurance for myself. Because when he woke up, I wrote a note saying, like, I love you. Once they take you off the vent, call me. I'll come up here with you and, you know, let your family know they got to leave. And we, me and the kids will come be with you. And I was like, I don't want to stay up here with them, you know, because I'm just not in the space to be up here with them. I don't even want to be around them. I haven't even been around them. Like, I don't want to be around them. And um, and plus, I had seen in his phone the cousins that he'd been doing his drugs with. So I had come up there to kick his dumb ass out. Ugh. I had to come kick him out. <laughs> anyway, and a couple of people. I put a list of who can't come in here, all of that. And, um, cause like his aunts and stuff posting everything on Facebook. Oh, mm-hmm. pray for my son. On the, I mean, my nephew's on a ventilator. This, I'm like, they don't even want y'all to know. Why are you putting stuff on Facebook? The hell? And, um, so yeah, I was just pissed. I'm like, I don't even want to be up here. And, um, yeah, I didn't kick him out. I was like, I'm gonna just go get my stuff, send this note so he can give it to Dante when he wake up. And I'm going to go handle some stuff I need to handle and, you know, take care of my children and not be sitting at this hospital. And then I don't have to worry about him being up there by himself in the day. They'll be here. Okay. When he woke up immediately, of course, he immediately asked for me. And uh, his mom, I guess she didn't like that. She done told me I ain't been up there. I'm uh, arguing with him while he's on a ventilator. Just saying all kind of crazy stuff. Like, immediately when he wake up i'm like how sick are you <laughs> like why are you immediately even talking about it? why aren't you immediately like dante are you out your mind why'd you do drugs why'd you do this mm-hmm. why'd you do this y'all talking about me and i'm like 
it was insane. But yeah, so that had already happened. That whole craziness had already happened before he died. And so, like I said, it hurt me, but it was just like, I already knew how y'all was coming. As far as not being my family, y'all not my family. But I didn't expect them to attack me. That, <laughs> that cracked, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that cracked me up. Because I'm like, y'all probably hit me, boom, her, like, trying to hurt me for what? And who was it? <laughs> like, what members, <laughs> I'm going to have to cut that up. What members of the family was it that attacked you? His mama first tried. She's the one that it, it, that initiated it. Because I was about to start talking and getting, like, some stuff out. Because, obviously, she's been lying to everybody saying I did something to this man. So I'm talking to the granddaddy because he had like cussed my sister out or something. So I came out. I'm like, why is she saying you cuss her out? And he was like, I was out of line. He was like, I can admit I was out of line. It's just tensions are high. And I'm like, okay, we're going to get into some things. Why are tensions? I was just like, okay, so why are tensions so high? And everybody's out here coming out. So I'm ex. I'm like, so why are tensions so high? Like, when did he just overdosed in July? Like, why are y'all something, something? And I started to talk. And his mom immediately rushed. She's like, you kept him from us. And tries to like attack me and that she was held back and then his aunt and his cousin come around the car and like all i seen was my mama grabbing a hold of somebody's wig yanking it off and i tried to get over there and so i said oh my gosh she attacking my mama so i tried to get over there i got heels on i immediately went down just off the fact i had heels on trying to move too quick like <laughs> i was cracking up and then all of a sudden, it was just a thousand people on top of me. I'm down here just on the ground. Like, I'm making sure I'm protecting my face. I feel somebody pull my hair. I feel a couple of hits here, a couple of hits here. And, like, I'm making sure I'm protecting my face. And then I'm just like, okay, dad, I guess they're going to get everybody off of me eventually. But. <laughs> and so, is it that, like, they feel like you, like, you made the call to take him off life support? You know what? We probably could have got into a big conversation and got some information about what the hell they mad about had we talked and in that moment we was about to get to some truth and so something his mama didn't want that because she been saying what she want to say and so she don't want that narrative to change of what she been lying about and narrative is a word that misha uses when she tells her story mm -hmm. is the narrative that people want out or mm -hmm. want to run with or you know want to be true yeah um so it's interesting. I can't wait till y'all meet each other. But it is like... <laughs> yeah, listening to her, I'm like, oh my God. Ugh. It is super interesting that, like, y'all just have so many similarities. Mm -hmm. and, and even the way, the language that you all use to, sh to describe your experience. Yeah, because it's, somebody's just blatantly lying on you, making up a whole falsity, you know? So, yeah, his cousin got all of my face. She's screaming. She's like, yo, count him. I'm looking at her, I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, for real? I literally was like, for real? Like, what are you even talking about? I'm so confused and y'all all on top of me, so I just don't know what. I couldn't do nothing. It makes me so sad that there was never an opportunity to even have a conversation about, you know, about anything. Yeah. Like, that's actually pretty disheartening. But they did reach out to me on my son's birthday a couple weeks ago. His mother texted me and said, Oh, hey, just checking on y'all. I wanted to tell the car happy birthday. And his grandmother called me on Facebook. I, of mm -hmm. course, didn't message anything back, anybody back. Maybe they starting to see the error in their way. I don't care if they starting to see from a thousand years of blindness. <laughs> 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 I will never speak to those people again. Yeah. I mean, and that's understandable after what you experienced. <laughs> so, let's get into Widow Talk. Ooh. Widow Talk with Sydney. So, okay, Sydney, you watch the podcast, you know yes. how it goes. <laughs> you got a stack of cards in your hand. You can shuffle them. You can pick off the top. It don't matter as long as you don't look at them trying to prepare an answer. Okay. So, girl, we've been rapping. Um, so, we'll just pull a couple because Mommy Anna, we both got to get to the kids. So, let's pull a couple cards and um, finish that episode out. Okay. Oh, so me? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever felt that you had to hide your grief? Uh, I felt, yeah, because I thought I, especially in that first like month, and then what just happened in July, and then he died two months later. So I was already talking about what happened in July. Like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. 
and then he died. So then I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. And like, I would talk to people and nobody would ever say like, oh my God, or anything like that. But I just felt like, okay, I gotta stop talking about it. You know? And I'm like, and I would say it sometimes, like I feel like I should stop talking about it. And they're like, no, 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 you know? But the, I'm just like that. Like, I don't like to just dump my stuff on people. I don't like people dump their stuff on me either. But yeah, sometimes I just like, sing it, forget about it. Just stop, just stop talking about it. And I've never been a bury your feelings type of person. But this, I don't want to bury it. I want it, to, I want it to be gone. Like, I'm like, I want it to go away. I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel like this. And I'm like, it ain't even hiding. I just want to erase it. I'm like, he just erased it. You know what I'm saying? But then I'm like, oh, no, because that sounds like a drug addict. Like, you just, that's what they do. They want to erase stuff. So they just go to get high and it ain't there no more. So I'm like, sing, go through it. Just go through it. But yeah. Have you done any therapy? No, I know I was saying, and we was talking about that last time, and I was like, huh, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I, like I said, like, I don't like telling people my business, so even coming out here, it's like, oh, <laughs> what am I gonna, who am I gonna be today, like, but it's just, uh, I don't know, I was like, do I wanna talk to somebody, and I'm like, do I, should I? I think you should. Yeah. Dang, do I sound crazy? No. <laughs> we, I mean, when you lose somebody. Am I on edge? <laughs> honestly, though, when you traumatically lose somebody suddenly, yeah. you are crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you're going through is crazy. Yeah. It's fuck. That's you was out of town with two kids. <laughs> you know? So, you don't sound crazy, but I just know how much it has helped me. Yeah. Um, And I've not been the most consistent with it but it definitely helped me to just process some things um when I was just like trying to keep myself busy to you know and like in positive ways but you still gotta process that shit yeah and go through it to get over it I'll be back and forth with it I'm like should I try I don't know who to go to just too. Like, I gotta who should I go to yeah. it's like a physical person or it's online um I prefer online, but um, the person who I'm going to recommend to you, she's local. So okay, you know. yeah. I would rather talk to somebody in person. Yeah. If I did. I got you. I'm going to give you a recommendation. <laughs> but you should. Though. Okay, let's pull one more card. Okay. <clears throat> if you could change anything you've done since losing your person, what would it be and why? Anything I've done since losing him? I would have um, not agreed to the wake. I would have had him cremated and toasted like my gut tells me to. And um, completely, um, I would not have told his mother myself. I would have told um, his dad, I call his stepdad, like that was the plan. I called him first and I was like, I'm gonna call mine first. Cause our relationship isn't as weird as his, mine and his mother's. I'd have called him, told him and let him tell everybody else. And I wouldn't have, like, except for his friends. I call I call all his people personally, like, friends and everything, because I didn't want people to see on Facebook. And um, I would have done, I would have done that. I would have told Ron and let him tell everybody else as far as his family. I would have told his brother and his, his biological father, myself. And then I would have told his friends, and then that would have been it. I will make my posts and stuff, like, to the public. Um, and, yeah, I wouldn't have agreed to the wake and all of that. I wouldn't have agreed to it. We need a part two. <laughs> we need a part two. Yeah. I have so much more to say. It definitely seems like we ain't even got into the yeah, like, And it's been 45 minutes. Like, it's yeah. almost been an hour. But, yeah. like, you know, time is elusive. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, there's so much more that I want to talk to you about. And I was about to ask you a question as well. I probably like that, but I'm like, we both got to go. So, like, let me not even so open another hole. Um, so, yes, promise Write it down, me, though. Don't forget it. No, I won't. Okay. Promise me that you will come back for a part two. I will. This is very, like, uh, it's good. It yeah. feels good. Saying it out loud. Yes, talking like, and knowing that you know exactly what I'm going through. Yes. So, and I ain't got emotional about talking about my husband this whole time, but just talking about the fact that I have a space to talk about this, mm -hmm. and that makes me emotional because that's good for me. And so I just really appreciate that so, 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 so much. Yes. And well, I thank really you. I appreciate you. you being open to sharing your story. Um, <laughs> and coming oh. over here to the crib, kicking yeah. in. Me and my cousins here today, y'all. I'm my own videographer today. Yeah, y'all fun. We did the thing, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, Sydney's going to come back. 
2024, Street Widows will be meeting monthly. So okay. I'm going to see Sydney even before she comes back for podcasts, unless it's like next week, because we can do like some more vision boards or something. But um, y'all, it's Street Widows Podcast, where we come in public, so don't tell it in private, can keep going. And we'll see y'all next time.